Hey, what is going on, guys? It's Vlogs IWC back here with another video, and today we're going to be doing another WWE pay per view. And today's pay per view review is going to be WrestleMania 36. If you guys don't remember WrestleMania 36, it was the infamous WrestleMania pay per view that was held with zero crowds in attendance because of the whole COVID 19 pandemic. This was supposed to be held originally at Raymond James Stadium in 2020, but was uh, pushed forward because of the pandemic, so they had the pay per view at Res uh, WrestleMania 37 in Raymond James Stadium instead of 36. So they've held the WrestleMania 36 pay-per-view in the Performance Center where NXT is usually held. So now, without further ado, let's get right into this video. Alrighty, first match I want to talk about on this list is going to be Cesaro versus Drew Gulak. This was just a kickoff panels match, you know, nothing really, really exciting. There's always been a feud with Sami Zayn and, uh... Daniel Bryan, which I'll get to further on in the video. But the kickoff, it was uh, Sammy's friend Cesaro taking on Drew Gulak, the friend of Daniel Bryan. They wrestle it out, and Cesaro ends up taking the victory over Drew Gulak. Up next, it is the Kabuki Warriors, who are the women's tag team champions at the time, taking on the team of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Nikki and Alexa Bliss have had a very good friendship this uh and this time period, they were tag they were tag teaming with each other for quite some time before they won the tag titles, and that's obviously how it led up to win them beating the Kabuki Warriors for the women's tag team championships. <clears throat> and I think I can't remember how long they've had the they held the titles for, but I'll put it right here in the co in the on the screen here. Alexa and Nikki uh, Nikki Cross take out the Kabuki Warriors and become the new women's uh, tag team champions. Up next, we have Elias versus King Corbin. Another one of those small matches that are just there. That you could you could just watch it on a Monday Night Raw or episode of SmackDown. You can really never tell the difference. It was just a match that was there. Corbin came out before the match, had a little uh, promo with a harmonica, which was really stupid. And they just started battling out. Where he is at Elias, takes the victory over King Corbin. And yeah. All right, another championship match. We got the Raw Women's Championship on the line. The Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. I'm sorry. Uh, takes on Shayna Baszler, the Queen of Spades. If you guys know, uh, Shayna has been do very dominant on NXT the previous year before 2020. And then she got called up to the main roster, had her first title match against Becky. The match itself was not that bad. It was really, it was a pretty good match. But they start wrestling it out and Becky Lynch ends up winning, retaining the Raw Women's Championship. I still think to this day that Shayna Baszler deserves a world title run. Our fifth match, Sami Zayn. As I was telling you guys earlier, I was going to come back to this. Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan with the Intercontinental Championship on the line. You know, Sami Zayn has Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura on his side at this time, which was a really, really odd pairing. Like, Shinsuke, Sami, and Cesaro was just a very odd pairing at this time. It, I, I, it was weird. Because Sami was during his heat was in his heel phase. And Daniel Bryan had at least a year left in the company before he went to AEW. Ending of the story is Sammy retains the Intercontinental Championship. And then Daniel Bryan leaves a year later. Match number six. We got John Morris. So this one is really weird before I continue this. So this was supposed to be a triple threat tag team ladder match between the Usos, John Morrison, The Miz, and The New Day. But since COVID, since COVID hit, they kind of... Uh, tweaked with the match and made it just a triple threat match for the tag titles and said so you don't have as many people in the ring at the same time which I, I guess makes sense you know social distancing but it, it was just again super weird for the time but the match itself was really really good in my opinion that was like my favorite match at night one not gonna lie to you that and the boneyard match were top two uh, at the end of it John Morrison wins he retains his uh, Smackdown tag titles fell and he grabbed him. Match number seven, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins in a no disqualification match. This match was a lot of fun. And now the one the one spot that everybody talks about in this match is what that Kevin Owens climbed. He found himself climbing on top of the WrestleMania 36 logo and jumping, uh, doing like a swanton bomb or something off of it. And that was just nuts. I wish I could have, you know, actually seen how tall it was and like... Obviously, you just see it on camera, so you don't really know how tall it is in person, but I'm sure it's hella tall to jump off of, but I would have loved to see what it looked like in person. Also, Seth Rollins was in his Monday Night Messiah uh, 
persona with Buddy Murphy and there was somebody else, but I just remember Buddy Murphy at the top of my head. Like I guess it's been it's been a while since I've uh, watched this pay-per-view. At the end of the day, Kevin Owens uh, wins. He yeah, he wins a nose qualification match. So we got Braun Strowman versus Goldberg, the Universal Champion. Now this match was super super weird. It was supposed to originally be Roman Reigns versus Goldberg, but since COVID, Roman backed out of WrestleMania, and so we never got that match between the two. Which really, I think we ended up getting it later on, if I'm not mistaken, but. We were going to get at WrestleMania 36, but it didn't happen because Roman was uh, out. So we got Braun Strowman uh, pretty much, I think he pretty much just squashed Goldberg. I know Goldberg got a couple spears in there, but yeah, Braun Strowman just made Goldberg look, look like a little bitch. So uh, Braun Strowman uh, wins the Universal Championship and becomes a new champion. Now here we are with the main event of night one. We got the Boneyard match between AJ Styles and The Undertaker. This match itself was just pure cinema. Everything about it was phenomenal. It started out with Undertaker going, or I think it started out with uh, AJ, Luke, Gar or Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson walking up to the Undertaker like compound type area. And then Taker comes out and attacks but all three of them. And they all just start battling out. Taker throws Gallows and Carl Anderson off the roof of the uh, of his building. It was, it was, again, this match was so, so incredible and this is also the match that brings in that uh that famous meme that everybody talks about with uh aj styles staring off in the distance and undertaker just standing right behind him well uh undertaker takes the win obviously you know it's a boneyard match they ain't gonna have aj beat undertaker in his like own match type come on now taker uh choke slams aj into the grave buries it with the dirt he gets on his bike and drives off and then the last shot we get of wrestlemania was uh, AJ Styles in the dirt and then reaches his hand up and uh, signals that he's coming back from the dead and that'll be it for night one. Alrighty, now we kick off night two and I forgot to mention this in night one. Uh, Gronkowski and Mojo Rally were the hosts of WrestleMania this evening or these past two nights. And also to kick uh, kick off the night two, we get Stephanie McMahon to come out, you know, tell us uh, how enjoyable night one was and what to expect for night two. And then we have a kickoff match between Liv Morgan and Natalia. Uh, don't I'm gonna be honest with you? I don't really know much about this that whole feud. Uh, Liv wins, beats Natalia. Moving on. Then we got the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, a champion, Rhea Ripley, takes on Charlotte. And this match was really, really good. Like, this was probably the top five matches of night two. Rhea and Charlotte have to be at least number three for sure. And Charlotte shocks everybody, and she becomes a brand new NXT Women's Champion. All right, match number three, we got Aleister Black versus Bobby Lashley with Lana. Another one of those uh, silly Raw storylines that didn't really get anywhere. You know, Lana was dating Bobby Lashley, you know, that whole affair. With her, with them. <laughs> Moral of the story is that Mr. Black wins. Yeah, moving on. Next match is Otis with Mandy Rose versus Dolph Ziggler and or with Sonya Deville. Otis and Mandy Rose have had this love relationship going on at this time for quite a while. Then Dolph tries to steal Mandy Rose away from Otis. Ends up the plan backfires and Otis wins. Gets the girl at the end. And yeah, Dolph loses. Otis wins. Next match, we got Edge versus Randy Orton in the last man standing match. This is their first of, I think, either two, either two or three uh, matches because I know one of the other ones was Backlash, the best wrestling match ever, which was a complete lie. But this match between Ra Edge and Randy Orton for the last man standing was actually, and going back to that Backlash match, so Edge walks out victorious. And now here we are for a small segment in the show. This I couldn't really care two shits about, but it's uh, Gronkowski pins Mojo Raleigh for the 24-7 championship. Next match, Street Profits versus Angel Garza and Austin Theory in a normal tag team match. And I noticed a lot of these matches were non-title. They just, like Vince just threw a whole bunch of different matches together and said, okay, go out and for WrestleMania. Street Profits win, of course. And, and then we got Bailey versus Sasha Banks versus Lacey Evans versus Naomi and Tamina in a fatal five-way match for the SmackDown Women's title. This match was really, really good. It cooked. There was a lot of big spots. It went on for quite a while. Uh, Bailey retains the SmackDown Women's Championship. And then now we got our second to, actually third to last main event. 
And this is my personal number one favorite match of WrestleMania 36. Was John Cena versus The Fiend Bray Wyatt in the Firefly Funhouse match. Everything about that match was incredible. The storytelling, the match itself was just, it was it wasn't really much of a match. It was just inter, it was just like an entertainment movie segment type of match. Bray knocked it out of the ballpark. Rest in peace, Bray. Love you, man. Miss you. Bray wins the match. Brought back a whole bunch of old things for Cena. Like he made Cena come back with the prototype Doctor Thugonomics. He came out with an NWL entrance. And then an old WWF style uh, video with Bray and John Cena, but Bray called him Johnny Big Meat or something like that. And then you guys get the famous Puppet Vince. This is such good shit. Alrighty, and then our main event of the evening, Drew McIntyre, the winner of the 2020 Royal Rumble match. Who won the Royal Rumble in front of a large crowd in front of everybody. Well, he won the WWE Championship against Brock and... And I think that match lasted for like two, three minutes. I know it was a, like Drew just killed Brock in that match. So Drew becomes the new WWE Champion in front of nobody, unfortunately. Also, if you guys didn't think we were done there, there was one more additional match that they threw on the card. It, and it was just so random, but I guess we had it. Drew McIntyre, who just won the WWE Championship, by the way, like I just said. Already had a title defense, not even a minute later, and it was against The Big Show. I don't know how that whole deal with Drew and The Big Show come, having, you know, having this match, but it happened. Drew retains, obviously, because how wild would that have been if they just gave it The Big Show after Drew wins? That would have been the cra that would have been really crazy. But Drew wins. That's it. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video of my review of WrestleMania 36 Night 1 and Night 2. If you guys can, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Comment down below WWE pay-per-views you would like me to react to. Go follow me on TikTok and Twitch where I stream and post videos on there as well. This has been Vlogs AWC and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.